Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Book of Hours. Let's dive right in. So, I had a minor revelation, or a minor realization. Remember how I was saying that um, we're going to be having quite a lot of honey? Um, what I realized <laughs> is that we need to feed our chickens, and we can apparently feed them honey. Probably. Uh, and it's not interested in food right now. Um, but, so, basically, I was thinking, you know, I, I, first I saw a cat. This is how ADD minds work, by the way. I saw a cat, and I was like, oh, that's a good cat. That's a good cat. Oh, yeah, I've got a lava. What does lava have? Um, it's got knock as well. So, technically, we could have used the lava, um, in this recipe, and I thought maybe a lava is easier to feed than a snake. Um, I was a uh, viper because, yeah, uh, for those of you who aren't aware slash didn't notice, uh, to feed a tame viper, uh, we need uh, a hen egg or an egg of some sort. There might be other options, but the easiest way I've found of feeding a viper is with an egg, which effectively means because we get a hen egg at a one to one ratio of whatever food we put into a hen. Um, it's about as easy to feed a snake as it is, um, like resource wise, uh, to feed a chicken or a cat. However, it just takes more effort. Uh, I also realized the chickens themselves are cooperative, uh, beasts, so we can, uh, throw them into a devotion slot uh, if we felt like it. Uh, which they got a good amount of scale. What shrines do we have with scale? If I can find any. Maybe I'm just blind. Okay, that one. Oh. What shrines? A loud noise? That's a musical instrument, that makes sense. Um, that is a thing. A great clock. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, do we not have a shrine with scale in it? I get a feeling there was one somewhere else, but I don't remember where, so uh, we're just going to kind of ignore that for now. Um, Atlantic Amber? Interesting. Anyway. Uh, let's get back to what we were doing. We were, I was thinking of feeding, um, something to a chicken, but first we need to talk to the chicken. Perhaps it'll offer something in return. Yes, give me an egg or something. Uh, over here we want, uh, leaves and thorns going. And... Yeah, we're just gonna leave that book there for now. I c couldn't couldn't remember how if we were able to get a ten with metal. I don't remember how. So, um, what to commit this metal to? Uh, interesting that no forge of our three ink skills which are, one of them is currently busy. None of our ink skills at five aspect reduce a forge ink. Which is a tad strange, but oh well. We put in that. Uh, something like this. Uh, do -do. We throw into here. Or a memory, we don't have a memory. I'm just curious to see if we have anything at Forge 10 for inks. Direct salts are too weak, aren't they? Very weak. Uh, these have Forge 2. Nothing comes to mind, Grand. Oh well. Maybe an ink of power? I doubt it'd be an ink of revelation. Uh, what could we even put that in? No, we can't put metal in there. 
sorry, we will get back to reading the books. Um, I just want to answer this question real quick. Uh, in these maybe? Technically we can. Uh, we would need memories for that. And yeah, ideally we want to throw this Iotic Essence in because that is five all by itself. Powerful. Uh, lab noise? Think of power. Nothing comes to mind, but, but, do we have a, we got a stone? Nope. That one has one. Yeah. Okay. Something for later. Um, loud noise again. Uh, ink power maybe. I get the feeling there has to be a forge ink and maybe um, it would be an ink of power, I would assume. Anyway, uh, on to this book. Uh, which has multiplied. <laughs> it seems to do that if you save and quit the game and reload. Uh, so this was The Shadow in the Stair. Uh, Ernestine Peterhams records her conversation. I'm just making sure I'm recording. Yep. Uh, records her conversations with the little darkness in Hush House's Stair Tenebrius, which she calls Dongling. Stair Tenebrius. Do you mean this place? Little darkness. So darkness and stairs. Maybe this one. Eh? Yeah? Smart. Maybe I is. Um, anyway. Ernestine's business in the cellars of Hush House. Cellars. Um, often took her up and down the stairs tenebrous. Tenebrous. Although it is avoided by every other servant, Donkerling attempts, attempted first to consume her and then to demand sacrifices from her. Ernestine's, Ernestine continued to bring it mice, but became very stern when it asked for a new drowned child. Fucking hell. Um, <laughs> Alright. Donkeling claims to be an imprisoned long under the protection of the deepest power of the sea. It is prone to occasional bouts of raving about how, when it has its freedom, its patron will drown the isle. Ernestine renders most of these long speeches as dot dot dot. Uh, but it is, but it is very but is very interested in what it can tell her about the circumstances of shipwrecks. There are hints that she may have been planning a salvage expedition. Okay, and this is the same text over, over again. So this is... The, this thing in here, the shadow here is a sentinel. Uh, to enter is unprepared, apparent according to Ernest. Uh, Ernestine. Have we heard of Ernestine before? I think I know that name. Um, according to her, that shadow is a trapped long, was it? Um, or according to the, the shadow itself, uh, the deepest power of the sea. Hmm. Well, we have a book. We have that. We have that. And we have Memory of Impulse. Uh, I probably should have <laughs> kept hold of the book. Uh, let's see. The Shadow in the Stair. Let's make a note of that. Uh, memory of Impulse. Another uh, Nectar One, which is a bit annoying. Uh, oh, there's Enduring Reflection. In our list, we want to take that and put it down in the crafted section so that we have easy reference to it. Don't mind me, I'm just talking about my notes and trying not to get things mixed up. Um, and it has lesson coil and chasm. That's a new skill. Would you look at that? Uh, it's a nectar skill as well with some scale. Mm. Mm. 
We'll have to see which one it mages in as to whether or not we want to bolster that, because we don't have a, a significant uh, scale skill, though Horns and Ivories is not committed and is a scale major. Uh, we can put this down somewhere. Six down here, if I am correct. Yeah. I think I'll go through... Hey, editing me. If I forget... Ed editing me. Um, if I forget to do this, uh, go through every book I've ever read and make a note in my notebook about what strength they are so that I can easier find them. Thanks. Uh, scale 2. Okay, so... Coil and Chasms. Uh, editing me. Again, you're in charge of writing all these down in in the skill recipes. Uh, but until then, what are we doing? Oriflam, uh, we have a book, and it's not cursed. That's always good. Uh, Winter 10, I reckon we can probably tackle that at some point. Uh, can we? As I say, massively overconfidently. Uh, nope, we have Winter 2 is our strongest one. Um, it's not written in Killer's Army, so that won't help us. We have three from Wist. Um, so five. Two from a thing. We would need a an ink, I believe. Uh, let me find... Where was that? Uh, Rehabate. There's one. So technically we can do it, I think. Two from a skill. Five... Six, seven, eight. I can't count for shit. <laughs> um, we can do a, a, an eight one, but not a ten one. So I will put this straight away for later. Um, yeah. Uh, we have... Uh, from 108, um, on the fifth history, particularly on those who are said to have passed over from it. Um, the great hooded princes, the not long who ascended under the mother of ants, um, apparently so ever claims, uh, but now honour the horned axe. Okay. The great hooded princes, I'm definitely recording, uh, call their library the Tome of Lies. Uh... Tomb of Lies? Tome of Lies? To Tomb of Lies. And this has be given rise to a foolish tradition that the princes are habitual liars. Of course, in fact, truth flourishes when lies are slain. Uh, on the other hand, the princes do not say knowledge is power, but rather power is knowledge. Okay, fair enough. Eva has, to her regret, never visited the library. She notes that it is said to be west of the Lion and north of Victory, and suggests that although the princes are generally associated with India, their library must be farther east. West of the Lion and north of Victory, east, further east of India. Hmm. Okay, somewhere in Russia, maybe? Um, it could be anywhere, I suppose. North of Victory, where the hell's Victory? Because, like, if, if Victory is the South Pole, then it is somewhere uh, west of the line and east of India. Uh, I don't know where the line is. It's a, this woman is terrible at directions. Um, anyway, uh, we have another new lesson. Lesson, Pentiments and Precursors. Fucking hell, that's interesting. Um, Scale and Grail. Burn it, why not? Uh, 
we were rushing ahead of ourselves. What do we have? A uh, confounding parable. We know what that is. We will make a note of it. Uh, one. Uh, confounding parable. Moth two, rose two, sky two. Quite, quite good. Uh, next up we have uh, the alloy of the white rose, uh, Mistress Whiteflower and her alchemical teachings. Uh, the House of York favoured these teachings, yet failed to bring them victory. The author asserts proudly that the Dawn Road ends in the second dawn, and hints darkly that the downfall of the House of York was Grail Sabotage. Interesting. I'm not sure what it refers to in the House of York. So, for those who don't know, the the War of the Roses, which I think has become the War of the Roads in this version of the lore. Um, the War of the Roses, uh, I think it was either uh, the House of York or the House of the other one. Um, but I think they were on like, like opposite sides to... You had the House of York versus the House of something else, um, but the actual House of York was siding with the other side, and as was the other ones. This is a QI fact that I heard about ages ago. Um, I don't know, terribly re, uh, <laughs> terribly remembered and re anecdotalized. Um, that's not a word. Shush. Uh, but if you're curious to find out if I'm talking shit, feel free to Google it. The internet is at your disposal. A Mistress White Flower urges a history of Azult, where the second dawn may come to pass. She identifies Xanthotic Essence as Azult's predecessor. She explains that with sufficient lantern, bitter black salts can be purified to Xanthotic Essence and Aortic Essence can be exalted to Xanthotic Essence. So again, reference to... Uh, Aortic Essence can be exalted to Xanthotic Essence. We've heard that before um, with our recipe book. Um, what do we hear? Aortic Essence plus 15 Lantern equals Xanthotic Essence. Aortic Essence plus 15 Forge equals Orb. Orpiment's Exultant is what we have written down. Um, hmm. And something, something. Bitter black salts can be purified to Xanthotic Essence. Or other salts. I know there's some in the lodge, but. Uh, fine, I'll go, I'll go over to the bloody lodge. <laughs> I knew there's some somewhere else. Um, There's nothing remarkable about that list of uh, aspects, however. Um, I will copy that and make a note of it. With Keeper Level Forge, Aortic Essence is the precursor to the great ink called Orpiment Exultant. Okay. Um, with Keeper Level Lantern, it can become Xanthotic Essence instead. Uh, I don't know where I wrote that down, but that is a thing that I made note of. Uh, I will be smart, and I will record uh, the Alloy of the right White Rose. Um, and associate this new uh, clue is here with that. Um, it's a black salt plus Xanthotic Essence plus something equals Azult's predecessor or uh, Azult hmm does it say anything about Azult? I don't think so hmm Xanthotic Essence sorry I'm just <laughs> reading out fucking random words uh, I'm not articulating this well but um Sufficient lantern bitter black salts can be purified to xanthotic essence. So xanthotic essence is the is the 
is the fuel, like the, the, the forge one, right? This one here. No, that's iodic, fuck, iodic essence. Um. Okay, okay, that makes some sense. So, where is the other one? Uh, where is it? Gone. Over here. Um. So, bitter black salts can be used to make uh, this xanthotic essence. And iotic essence can be exalted to an xanthotic essence. Yes, that. So, that is the iotic essence plus 15 lantern equals xanthotic essence. Um, I don't know what recipe that is for, but whatever. Um, so, bitter black salts can be purified to xanthotic essence. Okay, good to know. Um, and Xanthotic Essence is the uh, Azult's predecessor. So that is the thing before Azult. Okay. Uh, we've been fucking around with Iotic Essence a lot, but I guess we should try and fuck around with this. Um, what do we need for that? Forge or Lantern or something else? Keep it in mind. Uh, we have uh, ooh, purifications and exaltations. That's a good and a memory of revelation. Uh, we will make a note of that. Copy that into our book. Memories. Uh, memory of uh, revelation. Kind of annoying that we still don't have a second lantern two memory. Um, whatever. Okay, um, but we have some, uh, some of these, what do we want these for? Are they good for anything, do you reckon? Lantern and sky, again with the bloody sky, we've got lots of sky, don't we? Uh, we could keep powering up glass burn vessel craft, I mean, I think that's crazy at this point. Um, we could maybe try and one of these but that at that point we might as well just uh level two this and find out um cool if you want some food i'm pretty sure we can give you some honey later final honey uh we have a curious hunch and hungry viper we just talk to you about that and then we need to give you more bloody soul cards. Whatever. Uh, curious hunch. And should we commit it? Sure. An omen. Memory. Knock. Egg. <laughs> the egg. The egg calls to me. Um. Give me, give me a sec. Maybe editing me, maybe cut this out if I just, you know, have a fuck about for a while. But um, what did I want to do? I want, I want to put an egg in here. Soul card. We don't have a soul card for it. Fuck. Okay. Um, but if we did have curious hunch plus an egg plus what skill? Let's us hatch. Uh, Something, something. Uh, a horns and ivories. Horns and ivories. Uh, gives us one knock, and it is not committed. So we could, in theory, bolster that. Might be justifiable if we had something for it. Um, other than that, uh, we're not going to do it. Mm, yeah. What well, seasoning has uh, quite a bit of a knock? Easiest to check would be this way. Some tea. Mist Kiss Water has two. So. That'd be seven. Uh, and then. 
uh, our... Where is it? Uh, Shapt is two. Uh, so we would need to upgrade horns and ivories once to be able to hatch an egg with a curious hunch. But it's doable. No, is it? Is it? Question mark. Uh, Shapt can't go in there. So it's not doable without uh, using something stronger than fucking water. Uh, we need to figure out how to get these sacraments to do. Uh, pretty sure I didn't cut that out. So, oh well. Throw that in there. And we're going to keep going. Uh, we have I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we need to use our consider verb for that, I reckon, otherwise we're just going to be dumb again. Um, all of our stuff is healthy though, nothing is cursed. It's fine. Memory of regret. Although, that does give us something. Did we care about metal? We, we wanted a metal memory, right? Uh, a forge memory. Um, what do we need it for? <laughs> uh, ink of power? Were we going to check? I think we were, weren't we? Uh, so we wanted this into... It was forged. This is going to be allowed again. Power, metal, the memory of regret. Damn it, not strong enough. Um, close, but not close enough. Oh well. Anywhere else we can use? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, loud noise again. Oh wait, hang on. No, 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 I lied. Um, because we can throw a rock in there. Nothing comes to mind. Okay, so Forge 10 Ink of Power does nothing. And we can't put that in there. Loud noise now. Okay. We have some lessons. Going well. Uh, open that. Pentiments and Precursors. Editing me. Again, make a note of the skill recipes and stuff. Um, feats and feats. What's that word? Of oh, forgotten things. Uh, the carapace. Across the line of Anteos. The world of a low red sun. Though much is taken, much abides. It's got two scale to it. Uh, which is nice. And I think that's good. Skyscraper we've already got one. So Hushery, uh, we're still only one rank in. Um, let's try for this real quick. Uh, we should check out this. Oh. All these wets. Which we're honestly quite happy with. I think I'll put it here. Hiccups, sorry. I'm uh, breathing to try and get rid of them. Has anyone ever said that? Like, the. You know, everyone has, like, bullshit cures for hiccups. Like, no, the easiest way is just breathe deep and frequently. Hiccups are your body spasming to try and get more air into it. Um, so, all this bullshit about, like, drinking water and, like, holding your breath, whatever. No, just breathe deep and frequently. Breathe. Like fill your lungs with oxygen, um, and if that isn't working, then you're in a room without any oxygen, and you should leave. Uh, anyway, um, the ceaseless tantra, uh, the avant-garde choreographer Nicholas Kiery supposedly incorporated this tantra into his menacing ballets. Sure. Out of time, we are at the thirty-minute mark. Uh, we will keep going. 
The Ceaseless Tantra is devoted mostly to warnings about the lively creatures called percussants. Percussi. Percussigants. But concludes with a chant which can be used to summon them. It observes that percussigants can be taught any dance, but they prefer only one. Interesting. That which does not cease is not ceased. Sure. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, another memory of impulse. Uh, let me make a note of that. And a memory of impulse. Copy and paste. Uh, and this gives us a lesson weaving and not weaving. Not working. Sure. Learn about creatures that never stop dancing and learn how to tie them down. Um, that's a new skill. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'm happy to learn that skill. Um, and then, uh, lastly, we have this one Prophecies of Glory, uh, religious and patriotic fables collected or composed by William Gore. This is much more sober in tone than Gore's previous when it's got histories. Evidently, he has become religious in his later years. I'm wondering if we have that book already. Each fable describes, uh, descri describes the coming of the second dawn, when the hours, hours of the sun will be united, but in eternity denied. The Vampire Light and the Feast of Rays, Gore depicts a tainted dawn which can only be purified by a second division of the sun. He insists repeatedly on the dangers and temptations of a false dawn. What the fuck is he on about here? Um, so this is another mention of the second dawn, which we've heard about already. Sorry, I was looking away. If that sounded shit. Um, second dawn. So it's, it's prophesizing a, another thing, which is another division of the sun. So there is the sun in rags, which is a, an hour. Uh, once there was the sun in splendor, however, that is no more. Um, so the, canonically, the, the sun isn't as bright as it used to be. Um, and this is talking about another division of the sun being a second dawn and a false dawn he might be referring to uh, a, a blue sun nuclear <laughs> nuclear dawn I don't know that was that, that yeah uh, lesson watchman's paradoxes uh, more of those which we might actually use for it um, we'll have to think about it. Illumination and Nectodromy. It's not committed, which is good. And, and another bloody memory of Revelation. Don't need any more of those. <laughs> nope, I want to copy donate. Memory of Revelation. Got many sources of that, but none of any other lantern too. There we go. Grab hold of that. And I think uh, we will leave off here for today. Um, Numa isn't about to jump on us, so we should be okay. I think so. I think Numa only happens between seasons. It shouldn't be halfway through a season. Um, so we should have time to process these lessons, but we will be uh, focusing on that uh, next time. Until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, leave a like if you want to, and till next time, peace.